So the fall season is a magical time of year. You've got the fall colors from fall flowers and grasses. You have dying flowers that also look good as drying flowers. <laughs> you have flowers changing colors, shrubs changing colors. And then there's the wonderful anticipation of the explosion of autumn foliage that you're gonna get, hopefully. But fall is also time for fall garden cleanup and tidying up your yards. But a question often comes up is, what do you prune in the fall versus what do you just trim back slightly? Or do you trim back slightly? Maybe you should trim back a lot, but not hard prune. So there's a lot of questions about that, and that's what this video aims to answer today. For most of the plants, the shrubs and trees in your garden, fall is actually not the best time to prune. Spring is the best time to prune, so that actually makes it a little bit easier for you in terms of your fall gardening chores list. However, you do want to trim some things back to tidy up the garden. Welcome to Garden Sanity, I'm Laura, and today I'm going to be all about what to prune, what to trim, what not to prune, so that you can get back to fall gardening, doing your chores, and having a little bit easier time knowing what's what. Now I'm going to go over each category, annuals, perennials, evergreen perennials, then we're going to talk about deciduous shrubs and trees, and that's going to include knockout roses, hydrangeas, butterfly bushes, ornamental grasses, we're going to talk about flowering trees, and then we're going to talk about evergreen shrubs and evergreen trees. So having said all that, this should give you a good amount of info so that you know what to do when. Now a few quick notes before I get started. First, I garden in Zone 7 here in southern New Jersey near the coast. Second, I'm breaking this video up into sections. YouTube calls them chapters. And you can use the chapter links in the description area below to jump directly to any section you want to watch right away. So if you want to watch about evergreens right away, you can jump to that section. Third, I'll be referencing a lot of helpful videos that are related to what I'm talking about throughout this video. And all of the videos I reference are going to be linked in the description area below for you, so you can watch them at your leisure. So next up are annuals, specifically summer annuals. Now, some gardeners like to just tidy up completely for the fall, and so they'll remove the annuals, roots and all, just take them out, cover up the ground with mulch or whatever, you're all good for the season, next spring you can plant some fresh ones. And then there are gardeners that love to plant fall annuals as well, or things like ornamental cabbages, mums, etc. And that's an easy thing to do if you remove your summer annuals and put the fall annuals or fall plants right in the same holes. Super easy, no doubt many of you already do that. I do things a little bit differently when it comes to annuals and tidying up my garden for the fall. So what I like to do is I like to leave some of the annuals in place so that I know where they are for next year, so that next year I can plant them in the same holes. So it's sort of a similar concept to removing your summer annuals and putting in the fall annuals, although what I'm doing is I'm cutting the annuals back to just a few inches, and then I see where they are. They're just gonna, because they're so low, I cut them back so low, you aren't even really gonna notice them against the mulch in the wintertime, or maybe even it snows where you are. And then in the springtime, I see where those are, I can dig those out, and I can just replace them with new annuals. I do this specifically with lantana every single year because it makes it super easy for me to just know where to put them, especially because I have bulbs everywhere as well. So once I found a good hole, I wanna keep that good hole. Now for the Dusty Miller, which is looking fabulous, you know, when I first planted this, I said, oh, you know, next year I'm gonna fill this with perennials. I don't know, I am loving the way this looks in the daytime. I love the way it looks at night. It's almost like a moon garden effect. So I may go ahead and just plant more of these next year. However, I'm gonna see how they do and how long they'll last. So I'm not gonna even touch these or cut them back as long as they look so pretty like this. Now for the lantana, that's a different story. It also looks absolutely beautiful. It's probably gonna be uh, sometime maybe in December when I'm cutting those back. I'm really gonna wait as long as I can because they almost are providing right now with their gold color, almost equivalent of what it would look like if I had mums there. So I keep lantana as long as possible. And the last plant that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet, but I am gonna cut it back, is the dwarf morning glory that I have. Even though it's in the very front where the curb appeal is and maybe having some tiny little dead stems there, you know, you may or may not notice it because it's such a low growing plant. However, I'm not sure if I wanna plant that again next year or something different. I can mull that over during the winter time, but to use the same holes, I'm just gonna cut them back. I know exactly where they're planted 
it makes planting next season very easy. It's a nice way to give yourself a little bit of garden sanity. And one final point about not digging up the annuals completely in the plus column is that less digging means less squirrels noticing the digging means they'll do less digging. <laughs> you know, this is a time of year, I don't know if you've got acorns or not, but we have a whole forest behind our fence in the backyard of nothing but oak trees. So we get acorns like crazy. And squirrels seem to like to find a home for them, but squirrels are known to dig up any kind of disturbed earth they see in your garden. So that happens a lot when I'm planting bulbs. It doesn't matter what I do, at least a few bulbs are dug up and I have to replant them. So in general, the less earth you disturb with roots and all, the less it's gonna have squirrels going, ooh, I wanna dig there. I don't know why, I just wanna dig. <laughs> so another good tip for not totally removing your annuals in the fall. So now let's talk about perennials. You don't need to cut those back in the fall. There might be one or two exceptions, but overall, it's about tidying up the garden, not giving everything a hard prune. You wanna save that for the spring, and there's several reasons. A lot of times, if you cut things down all the way to the ground, there's nothing there to really protect the crown of the plant. And sometimes if we get hard freezes, if the soil freezes, it might cause some heaving. If you have some stems still left over and they've caught some leaves, which is even better, you've got a little bit more protection to the crown of the plant, it doesn't have, it has more of a chance to survive, let's put it that way. Another important reason that you don't want to cut back all your perennials all the way to the ground is because a lot of bees and beneficial insects are gonna use your plants to nest in and hibernate and just kind of rest up during the winter season. So sometimes they'll use the hollow of stems that you leave standing, sometimes they'll burrow into the leaves around the base of the plants. So now that I know this, that has really changed how I prune. And that's why 99% of the time, I don't prune things back to the ground. I just prune leaving a few inches up at the top. And what I mean by that is I'll take a perennial, whether it's short or tall, if I don't wanna leave it for winter interest, I will cut it down to maybe two to three inches and I'll leave those stems. And yes, they're gonna get brown and they're not gonna look so great, but guarantee you're not looking at them super up close all winter long anyway. So you wanna protect the plant. It kinda of saves you from having to buy more plants if they don't survive. It protects the bees so they'll stick around your yard and help your plants out the following season. For taller perennials that have flowers on them, like your cone flowers, also called echinacea, your rudbeckia, also called black-eyed susans, like these goldstorm rudbeckia here, I like to leave these seed heads, the center of the flowers. I like to leave those on during the winter, not only for winter interest, but because the birds really, really love them. So you'll often see birds, or you may not, taking the little seeds that are found inside the center of all of these heads. Come springtime, not only can you prune those off, but that's when I'll cut these plants back all the way to the ground to allow fresh growth to start. Now, when it comes to hostas, those are an exception. You want to cut those back in the fall. Now, many hostas are going to continue to look nice well into the fall season, but once those leaves turn brown, and you want to wait till they turn brown, trim them off, leaving just a few inches, again, two or three inches of stems sticking up from the base of the plant. Slugs love hosta, and you don't want any slug eggs to overwinter on your hosta plant. So that's the main reason to cut them back, but also because they get brown, they get mushy. It's just, they don't look good. You want to wait until they turn brown, however, so that all the nutrients that are in the green leaves go back down, down the stems, back into the roots, and your plants are really good to go for the winter season. So next I wanna talk about evergreen perennials. And you can have wonderful color year round with evergreen perennials through not only flowers, but their foliage. Now I have a video where I share my top 10 evergreen perennials. And again, I will link to that below in the description area so you can see and maybe find some that'll work great in your garden. And in each case, I'll let you know when I tell you what my top 10 are, if they are rabbit resistant, deer resistant, or both. So make sure you check that out. So for most evergreen perennials, in fact, 99% of them, you don't need to cut them back in the fall. And in fact, I wouldn't because you wanna enjoy their leaf colors during the winter season. They add so much nice interest. Now, my totally tangerine GM here is looking a little beat up. It's got some black spot. We had two weeks, the past two weeks have been on and off with heavy rains. It's just been nuts. So what I might do is come in here and trim some of the worst looking leaves off, but leave the rest of the green leaves 
for beautiful winter interest. And that's especially important to do if you are growing beautiful varieties of hookera or hookerellas. A lot of those have variegated leaf colors. A lot of them are come in different colors. They're just beautiful. So you wanna leave those to enjoy them for the winter season. And another reason that you wanna leave your evergreen perennials is some of them have really interesting leaf textures. Like a new plant that I'm growing, I'm trialing it this year for proven winners in Walters Gardens. It's called Burgenia peppermint patty. It's a new plant. It's gonna be offered starting next season in the garden centers and catalogs. It has giant leaves that are just fabulous. And I'm looking forward to enjoying those in the winter. Now I specifically want to mention hellebores because even though I'm telling you not to cut your evergreen perennials back in the fall, I especially want to make sure I hammer this point home for you for your hellebores. Now hellebores are a winter blooming flower. However, sometimes depending on your gardening zone, if you're in colder zones, they may start blooming later in the spring. If you're in warmer zones, they may start as early as January. Now, I was lucky last year here in Southern New Jersey, I had one variety that actually started blooming in January. So what's going on right now in the fall with your hellebores is they're forming their little flower buds and you can't see them because they start way down low at the base of the plant underneath the evergreen leaves. So if you see one or two leaves that look tattered, go ahead and cut those off. But you want to leave the beautiful evergreen leaves. They're protecting those flower buds. And when you're gonna know to cut those back is gonna be once you see, and this will be once the hellebores are blooming, you're gonna to start to see some of those leaves are gonna look tattered and you can go ahead and cut them back and then that better exposes the flowers. It looks really beautiful. Now I have a video again on exactly how and when to prune your hellebores. So I'll link to that below so you can see exactly how to do it. Now for very short evergreen perennials like creeping phlox, dianthus, and candy tuft, you want to just leave these plants in place as they provide fantastic low evergreen color all winter long. Now for dianthus, you can trim any remaining dead flower stems back if you want. Otherwise, you can just leave these short evergreen perennials as is and they'll provide nice winter color. Now I should mention, as I'm telling you about all these videos you can read below, I also have a complete playlist of videos. It's an entire series of videos on how to prune and deadhead various plants in your garden. I'm gonna actually link to the entire playlist at the end of this video, as well as below in the description area, so that you can just see that whole list all at once and you can decide what you wanna see. So next are deciduous trees and shrubs. And these are the types of trees and shrubs in your garden that are gonna lose their leaves in the fall. They're going to be bare stemmed for the winter. And then in the spring, they're gonna start their new leaves growing for the season. Like these little lime hydrangeas right here. Now, for most of these shrubs, you can just leave that for the springtime. There's no need to prune in the fall. You can save it for the spring. However, I do know that there are some of you that love to prune in the fall, and that's okay for most of these. They're not going to be harmed. However, there are some shrubs that do benefit from not being pruned in the fall. For example, butterfly bushes. A lot of people will lose their butterfly bushes. They don't come back in the spring because they prune them back in the fall. And there's just, it was too much of a shock for the plant and they just do not bounce back the next year. So what gardeners have learned over the years is you don't wanna prune those in the fall. So definitely save that for spring and I have a video on that that you'll see in the description area below. So pruning a shrub encourages it to start pushing out new growth. So if you're pruning in the fall, don't be surprised if you start to see some new growth coming out where you made your cuts. Now, that's not always good, especially if you're in a colder climate, because what's gonna happen is it's just gonna start to push out new growth and then the first frost or freeze comes and all that's gonna die off. It's just gonna not be worth it. You're gonna have to prune that off anyway in the spring. So just a note about that. What we want instead is we want our shrubs to start going to sleep for the winter season. And that's kind of what they're doing right now as they're getting their nice pink colors on, for example, on these little lime hydrangeas. And as they start to, their leaves start to dry up, die off, they're gently going to sleep. And if you prune them, you're kind of jolting them awake. Now, we don't like when we're jolted awake, right? When we're sleeping, our shrubs don't either. So just keep that in mind, you can prune some shrubs if you want to in the fall. And I know with knockout roses, that's another one that people like to prune in the fall and that's okay. But just keep in mind that you may be encouraging some new growth you don't want. Pruning in the spring is just a better way to do it. I used to prune in the fall and now I do 99% of my pruning 
in the spring. Now some deciduous shrubs bloom on old wood, and that means that, for example, if you have certain varieties of mop head hydrangeas, they will bloom next year on this year's wood. So if you were to prune those back this fall, you're basically pruning off the buds that are already forming. Even if you don't think you can really see them, you're already pruning those off. And that's a lot of times why people in the spring and summer are saying, why isn't my hydrangea blooming? I don't understand. Well, it's kind of because you accidentally cut all those buds off when you were pruning in the fall. So in those cases, look at their plant tag. And if you didn't save the plant tag, try to go online, Google is your friend, and do a lot of research to determine exactly what variety you have so you can try and figure out if it's okay to prune in the fall or not. With most panicle hydrangeas, because, with all panicle hydrangeas, because they bloom on new wood, you don't have to worry about that, that you're cutting off any buds. So you can prune in fall, like I said, but I always wait till spring for those. And staying on the topic of hydrangeas, now's the time in the fall, if you want to, you can cut off the flower heads to bring them in for indoor arrangements, wintertime arrangements and crafts. Personally, I like to leave them on. We have mild falls here in Zone 7 Southern New Jersey, like I've mentioned before. I love the way they look. I get to enjoy the slow progression to pink. And then they start to turn to tan and beige. I love leaving them on for winter interest, especially if it snows. I love that the best. Now let's move on to knockout roses. As I just mentioned, some gardeners love to prune their knockouts in fall, and that's okay to do. I used to do that actually, and they always came back no problem in the springtime. Now I switch to springtime pruning. It's just a preference of mine. There's really no difference. They seem to bloom at the same time. Actually, in a previous pruning video I did, I talked about that, that the pruning, if it was off at all, it was maybe by a week compared to when I prune them in the fall versus when I prune them in the spring. So there's really no big deal if you wanna prune them in the fall. However, there are some reasons if you have roses, and not just knockout roses, that you may want to wait until the springtime. So for many varieties of roses, they produce rose hips, and those are these beautiful orange balls that stay on the shrub, usually through the winter time. And knockout roses, unfortunately, don't have those. And, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. I really love the way they look when I see them on other rose varieties. So if you're pruning your roses in the fall, you are going to miss out on having that beautiful color in your landscape. So another reason I don't prune my roses in the fall anymore is because I realize I get to enjoy this color all the way through Thanksgiving sometimes, depending on what kind of fall we have. Here we are in early October, and you can see I, I've got these are covered with flowers, and it's just, it's just so pretty. It's, roses, I don't know if they're usually thought of as part of a fall garden, but they've become a really essential part of my fall garden, and I love the pop of color that they bring. And again, if you want to prune your roses in the fall, I do have a video on fall care and pruning tips. So I'll link to that again in the description area below. Now, one last point I wanna make about roses of any type is you do in the fall, one of the chores you wanna do is you wanna get off the black spot or any kind of leaf spot you see on the leaves. You wanna make sure you take those off. I, again, I have a video I'll link to below all about black spot. And in fact, I just did a recent one showing you how this really was, attacked by black spot this season. It's a recent video and it, they looked horrible and they've bounced back beautifully. It took a lot of care. But you wanna get all that black spot off before the fall season ends because what'll happen is as those leaves fall off, they're gonna stay on the ground. Any rain, moisture, snow is gonna bounce that fungus right back up to your plant. And you're just gonna repeat the cycle. So you not only wanna remove those black spot leaves from your shrub, even if you're not pruning in the fall, but you also wanna clean up underneath the shrub as well. So that's my last tip about that. So if you have ornamental grasses, back away from the pruners. Seriously, put them down. <laughs> you don't wanna prune them in the fall. These are my piglet grasses, and you can see they have their beautiful seed heads on at this time of year. And fall and winter is really the time that your ornamental grasses get to shine in the garden. Yes, in the summer, they provide beautiful movement and texture in the garden, and they a lot of times serve as a background to a lot of other flowers and shrubs. But it's fall and winter when these produce their flowering seed heads, if you wanna call them that. And in the winter time, as they turn to beige and brown, they have such beautiful movement in the winter time that it just provides another element of winter interest. It's texture, it's movement, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, if you're afraid of the seeds spreading everywhere, what you can do is you can come in with your snips or printers and you can cut off the seed heads and throw them away. You don't wanna throw them back in the garden because then the seeds will sprout. So that's an easy way if you want 
to be able to enjoy your grasses but not have to worry about seeds spreading if that's a concern for you. In all the years that I've had my ornamental grasses since we've moved here in 2007, I have never had a problem with reseeding. So just saying, but some people I know have said they worry about that. So that's just a tip, cut them off and you'll be fine. And you can still enjoy these and then cut them down in the spring. Now I wait to cut them down in the spring until after my daffodils have been blooming for a while because the combination of daffodils, which pop up right around here and in other places in my garden with grasses is just beautiful. So I'd say wait till late winter, early spring or spring and cut them back then. So for deciduous ornamental trees, especially ornamental trees that flower in the springtime, many of these trees have already formed their flower buds. So any fall pruning will remove those flowers, like these buds on my Magnolia Jane tree. So that's why it's best to prune spring flowering trees after they're finished blooming, such as crab apples, red buds, dogwoods, magnolias, and red tip photinias for just a few examples of what I have in my own yard. And most of these trees don't need regular pruning anyway, unless you wanna shape them up a bit. Now, by the way, if you need to trim off a branch or stem here or there, whether it's from a storm or you just don't like the look of it anymore, it's hanging too low, that's okay to do at any time of year, even in the fall. So I do have one summer flowering tree and that's this limelight hydrangea tree, which as you see is still flowering and still changing color. It's going from lime to its wonderful pinks. I do have a few that are already brown, but this will keep going all fall. Now, a lot of people like to trim their hydrangea standards, their panicle hydrangea standards, whether it's a limelight hydrangea tree or it's a vanilla strawberry hydrangea tree, pinky winky hydrangea tree, any of those panicle hydrangea standards, you can prune them in the fall if you want. And I've got a bunch of videos on how exactly to prune those trees. Now, mine specifically, my videos are on how to deal with and care and prune the limelight hydrangea tree. However, the videos work for all types of panicle hydrangea trees or also called panicle hydrangea standards. I choose to prune in the springtime. I like that for a few reasons. One, it helps me see where to make my cuts once the leaves start coming out as little buds. It makes it a lot easier to see where you make your cuts. And two, I like to leave the flowers on for winter interest. So like I said, these are gonna go and stay like this all season long. Now, if you live in an area where it's colder and you get a lot of snow, I get it. You're not gonna wanna leave these standing because they're gonna weigh down by the snow. They're going to start to break off. So I get it. And in those cases, you can prune off the flowers and leave the stems. And that's not a bad thing. The stems will be fine during the winter and then you can prune them in the spring. Again, if you wanna prune them in the fall, you can do that. That's not a big deal. So a good idea though, is when you prune these off, you can use them for indoor flower arrangements. You can dry them, use them for crafts. But I let mine dry on the tree. I can do that in Southern New Jersey. Our winter last year was pretty mild, but even if we get snow, which I think we're expected to this year, they will start getting pretty ratty probably mid to late winter, <laughs> and that's when they start falling off the tree. They look like tumbleweeds. It's really not that pretty. So I leave them on the tree, my personal preference, but you can cut them off if you want to. It's not gonna do any harm to the plant. So for evergreens, whether they're trees or shrubs, you're gonna wanna save any pruning for the springtime. And that's if you need to do any pruning because some of your evergreens are gonna be very slow growing and they aren't really gonna need any pruning at all where other evergreens really need to be pruned regularly, otherwise they're gonna get a little bit out of control. Like these Rheingolds. <laughs> so remember that pruning encourages new growth. So if you're pruning these in the fall, it's going to encourage the shrubs to push out new growth and you don't really want that. You want all the new growth to be encouraged in the springtime when that's their usual time to grow. Yes, evergreens are evergreen, but they also are a little bit dormant in the winter time. So you don't wanna encourage them to do any kind of growth that again, may come off in a freeze. You just wanna let them kind of do their thing. And then in the springtime, that's when you can pick up the pruning. Now I'm gonna say one caveat for me. I have these two Rheingolds and birds nest in them and they nest in them from late winter into late July, August. So it's a really hard time for me to find when I can prune my Rheingolds. As you can see, they're really overgrown. And the reason they're overgrown is because they haven't been pruned now in about, I'd say two years, maybe three. So I need to prune them. And being that the birds started in late winter, I never got that window where it was really optimal to prune these. So I will be pruning them this fall. 
I know it's not optimal. I'm going to do it. These are very established shrubs, so I think they'll handle the pruning pretty well. But I'm going to cut them quite severely so that I can get them a little bit more in check because they are overgrown. And this is a time when no birds are in them, so <laughs> it's the only time I've got to prune. So the other reason I'm actually going to be pruning these as well is because down at the base of this one, we do think that there is a leak in our sprinkler system. And so I do need to cut that back anyway so we can figure out what's going on. So that one's gonna look even a little bit chopped up once I'm done with it. Now, I wouldn't suggest, if you're not that familiar with pruning evergreens, I wouldn't suggest doing this in the fall unless you've got an established evergreen that can really maybe handle a little bit of pruning. But I'm doing this as a one-off because I gotta get it done and hoping that that'll be fine. And by the way, I will be filming everything I'm doing for a future video. So you will see what I'm doing at the wrong time of the year. So this is a situation where it's do as I say, not as I do. But I don't like to say do because that's too forceful. So I encourage you to leave your evergreen pruning for the springtime. That's a lot nicer. So there's flowering evergreens that bloom in winter, and these include winter blooming heath shrubs. Now in the fall is when these flower buds are getting ready to bloom, as you see here on this heath. All the bright green that you see, those are tiny little flower buds, so you don't want to do any pruning in the fall. What you want to do with any kind of winter blooming shrubs, because for example for these winter heaths, they'll bloom into April sometimes. So you want to wait until they're done blooming before you do any pruning on these shrubs. So another reason you don't want to prune evergreens in the fall is if these shrubs have berries on them because you'll end up removing the beautiful berries and these berries provide not only more winter interest but also food for birds. I've got beautiful orange berries on my Manhattan Euonymus during the winter as well as on my Silver King Euonymus. I also get beautiful blueberries on my junipers and cedar tree. So another thing you may notice during the fall season is that your evergreen shrubs and trees get some brown needles, primarily on the inside of the shrub, but depending on varieties, it could be on the outside as well. Don't panic. This is a normal part of the shedding season for evergreens. It's similar to how our trees have beautiful fall leaves and then they shed them for the winter season. Evergreens do the same type of shedding. It happens primarily in the fall. Some trees it'll happen more year round, but primarily the fall season is when you'll see this occur. I have a video I'll put here to watch next, and that'll tell you everything you need to know, what to do, most of all, don't panic. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I really hope that it's providing you some garden sanity so that your fall chores will be a lot easier this year. Make sure to check out all the video links I put down below. Make sure to check out the playlist of all the pruning and deadheading that I have here up on the screen as well. That's going to give you all the info you need. And until next time, happy gardening.